G'day, my name is Mandy and this is Margaret. It's fantastic to be leading you in worship today, wherever you are. In life, we are all chasing something. We put time and energy into the chase, time figuring out how to get closer to the goal in our heads. Margaret, what have you been chasing or been passionate about in life? Well, I don't consider myself a very passionate person and I don't know that I've really chased after anything, uh, uh, that I've particularly chased it, but I have chased my children and I can tell you a story about my twins. We were about, they were been about two, I suppose. We lived at Wyala and I took them out. We were going shopping, got them out of the car. One decided to go upstairs and the other decided to go down the street. And boy, what do I do first? <laughs> Fortunately, someone came and rescued the one that was going down the street while I trotted after the upstairs one. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. A bit scary, a scary choice. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Mandy? Well, probably I started many different kinds of education after high school but didn't really finish any of them, so I did lots of different things. Nothing felt right. I backpacked overseas with a girlfriend for about five and a half months and had a great time, but came back home, still really didn't know what I wanted in life. Um, Sometimes, you know, it's hard to know what what you do want. It's a Mm. hard thing to find out what's important to you in life. We chase things and we can feel certain in our heads that these things will provide feelings of contentment, security or pleasure, and that we're searching for good grades, spot in the sports team, being able to play a musical instrument, a new car, better house, a new job, a promotion. We can, we can be passionate about these things when we really should be passionate about God. Chasing God is about taking the time to ask ourselves who or what we are pursuing and deciding to put our time, energy and heart into getting closer to God by deciding to spend more time in prayer, reading the Bible and listening for God's message, you'll be amazed at the difference in your life and the lives of those around you. You'll never be disappointed when you decide to chase God. So let's come to God in prayer. Lord, we long to know you better, to be filled to overflowing with your spirit. So we come, seeking you. Thank you, all-wise creator, for your creation is good. You formed us and gifted us with strengths and abilities. And we don't have anything that you didn't give us. To your name be all glory. But Lord, you've given us choice and sometimes we choose to misuse or even abuse what you have given us in our personalities and character and in creation. We want to be better, to live and love your way. Thank you, Jesus, that you chose to die on the cross so that we can be free of guilt and can start again a new creation totally right with you. That is such amazing grace. Thank you for concern for all, not just in times of trouble, but always, every moment. Thank you that you are always the same. You always were and always will be the way, the truth and the life, wanting us to come and grow in you. Thank you that your word is truth and that you are in control even when these things seem far from you, and that you can bring peace and joy for those ready to receive it. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now let us stand and sing our thanks. Praise to the Lord the Almighty. And we'll follow that with who you say I am.
thank you for the gifts of time, prayer and monetary offerings that are given to our church. Please see the screen for the banking details for offerings and there's also an offering bowl in the foyer. Please now join me in prayer. Lord, let our congregation be a witness to you, immersed in scripture, constant in prayer, joyful in worship, generous in giving, a loving, supportive, healthy church, interacting with the community, reaching out to those in need and transforming lives. Please accept the gifts we offer in Jesus' name. Amen. time for those online to call in and let us know that you are worshipping with us. Hello to you all. We have the sign-in sheet for those who are here and we want to hear from you out there as well to connect and also to share any prayer requests that you may have. Do it now. It's on the screen. So my, my, uh, my name is uh, Barry, 42 years old. Um, I'm originally from the Netherlands, came here 13 years ago, um, married uh, last January to Karuna. She's uh, reg- a regular here at the Uniting Church uh, and I sort of j- started joining her coming here to the Uniting Church. I uh, work as an electronics technician working on amplifiers and, and sort of for radar systems and scientific stuff. And uh, what else? I study at the Tabor College part-time for a bachelor degree in intercultural studies. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, we are sorry. <laughs> We've got a, uh, a little daughter since uh, the 31st of May. Uh, little daughter, Tara. Uh, first first uh, kid, so it's all pretty new for me. <laughs> oh, that's a very long and complicated <laughs> story with lots of ups and downs. Uh, how did I come to fate? Uh, I guess, uh, well, I was born, I, oh, I should say I was christened in the Catholic Church from many, many years ago. Um, my parents weren't really Catholic, but it was just because I was attending a Catholic school, I suppose. Uh, so I did all the, uh, f- what is it called, the uh, First Communion uh, and Confirmation and all that jazz. Um, but that was about it. And I, I didn't even really know who Jesus was until I started my studies in 2004, 12, 2012. Um, but uh, I, I really never really cared about any Christian stuff. Or, so, um, but then back in 20, 2010, uh, I just had a really rough uh, life. <laughs> um, I, I, I tried to, like I was living with my ex. She was a, a full-on alcoholic. So uh, when I came home from work, she was usually passed out and all that sort of stuff. Um, I also worked about 45, 50 hours a week, uh, a, a job that I didn't like at all. Like, it was so frustrating when you work a job that you don't like. Um, what else? I tried to, uh, I tried to sort of, I bought a house and a couple of motorbikes, so I thought, well, maybe that sort of cheers me up a bit, but it didn't. So I started searching for something uh, bigger or something more meaningful. Um, started looking in the Quran, <laughs> started uh, uh, reading the Bible a little bit, but I started a match with the uh, g- uh, genealogy. Um, 
Um, and that's all the names and the, her- the heritage and uh, just sort of didn't do anything for me. <laughs> so I closed the Bible. I actually started getting interested in Christianity because of the community. So they sort of sucked me in. I had to get baptized again. So <laughs> I got christened and baptized. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure if they're right. But uh, anyway, I was, I was still struggling. I was typ- uh, typically a Christian. I, I wasn't really a follower of Jesus, I would say. Yeah, so that's where my fate started. But when then many, many years later, in 2017, I had cancer. Uh, by that time, my you know it was a divorce and all that stuff. So I, I was just me um, in the hospital, uh, getting ready to have my tumor removed. Uh, tumor, not, uh, well, it was a tumor somewhere else. Um, it was sort of down there, down there. Um, I had, um, so before I was taken into the uh, op- operation theater um, I just had that realization like I have nobody, there is nobody here to, to talk me through it and, and, and the, the oncologist sort of came to my bed for some crazy reason and said oh I got that result from the MRI, like yeah it's definitely spread out so you will need chemotherapy um, so yeah I just started crying and the nurse went are you alright and I said yeah yeah I'm alright and the only thing I really could do was like uh, start praying Psalm 23 that, that I memorized. So I went, uh, you know, the Lord is my shepherd and he's all that I need. Um, I guess and that's where through, through that whole procedure of chemotherapy, that's where I really found my strong faith to just rely on God and, and nothing else. And, uh, and then further on through my studies, I realized that it's also about just being not just a Christ, not just being a Christian, but a follower of Jesus. Um, yeah, it's uh, important with my work. Um, or I'm trying to really live for Jesus. Um, I totally suck at it, <laughs> but I try. I try. Um, and actually, uh, when I met Karuna almost two years ago now. Uh, um, she is such a great example of uh, how somebody just naturally can have that faith and, and follow Jesus without doing any Bible college or whatever. She's just yeah, so such a good example at the moment for me. Uh, so yeah, I'm, through my studies, I hope to you know follow Jesus more, uh, maybe go on mission or um, somewhere. Like yeah, it's all. Like but before I did my bachelor in ministry, uh, I sort of had to pull out of that because I wasn't really sure what I was doing and what I was doing it for. I wasn't really a member of a church anymore at that time in my life. Um, so I, I went back to Tabor College in uh, uh, start. Was it the yeah start of the year? <laughs> because I felt like uh, all those little things that I'm sort of passionate about, I never really like. Well, how am I going to use? Uh, my passion for different religions or, or passion for history and cultures and how am I going to use that for the kingdom of God? It's such a, you know, I have these talents and gifts I can't even use. <laughs> uh, but then I, I married Karuna and just uh, everything started to fall into place. Everything that I ever did for the last 10 years it sort of fell into place and, and, and now I'm just, yeah, back studying, hoping to only 10 subjects to go, and hopefully after graduation, then uh, my calling becomes more clear, hopefully. We'll see. Hmm. Uh, at the moment, um, ah, well, definitely I'm, I'm reading a, a book uh, called uh, uh, One Life by um, Scott McKnight, I think his name is, and uh, it's really how to live your life for Jesus. you are got only one life to live, and you want to live that life for Jesus, and so it's very important to try and really discern what are my dreams in life, and, and does that dream um, sort of match up with the the calling of living a, 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 a king, like a kingdom life, a life filled with love and peace, and or they say shalom, <laughs> it's sort of love, peace, and justice. Um, and if that dreams dream pairs up with that kind of Jesus teaching, then then go for it and live your life, your one life that you have for Jesus uh, with that, that what dream that you have. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think about, or I'm, it all starts with prayer. 
um, trusting the Holy Spirit. Um, but I think nowadays people are just really looking for community. The, the secular world has taken out, um, as, now the secular world has emphasized individualism so much that uh, it made us believe that ah, if we just stay home by ourselves, then everything is going to be awesome. But it's not. <laughs> like depression is at an all-time high, and suicides are very suicide numbers are high. Um, people need community, and, uh, and we have got the best community in the world, which is you know the kingdom of God. And so, really, try to focus on love, uh, acceptance, and support rather than trying to judge people for their actions. That, that God is the judge. We don't have to judge. And I'm talking to myself too, but oh, I can be, you know, as a Bible college student, student you sometimes get a little bit, you know, um, judgmental. <laughs> um, but uh, as you mature in faith, uh, you sort of try not to do that. Um, yeah, so love and peace and support. And we have to try and teach people again what Christianity is like. Somebody said uh, during a lecture uh, the other other week that um, actually Australia, the Western world, is the most toughest mission uh, grounds ever uh, because everybody thinks they know Christianity and so they're very condescending toward us. But actually they have no idea what Christianity is about, so we have to try and re-educate with peace and lo- in a peaceful and loving way and it's just very tough. <laughs> yeah. Well, good morning, church. Uh, Welcome to Salisbury Uniting. My name is Nick. I have the great joy of being the minister here. How great was it hearing Barry's story? Thank you so much, Barry, for sharing a bit of of the journey God's had you on to this point. We want to, during this series, we're in a series called Preparing for Revival. We believe that God uh, is wanting to do a new work in us as a church, whether we're here on site or whether we're at home. And What we want to do in our services is to create more space for us to add faith to faith, to share what God is doing in our lives. And so, you know, a bit before Margaret invited you to send your prayer requests in, and whether you are at home or on site, you can send your prayer requests at any point to that phone number. But also, I'd love for us as a church to be sharing the praise points, how God is answering our prayers. So please send that number, uh, answered prayers. And what we'd love to do in our services is to create space for people to share, like what Barry has just done. But also, when we ask for prayer, we can thank God for the answered prayer as well, to create a moment where we thank God for the healings, where we thank God for his provision, where we thank God for his presence. Um, it's so important that when we gather, we add faith to faith. That's what revival is, when God is stoking the fire of who he is and what he's doing. Uh, we're going to continue in worship. We're going to sing to our great God, Awake My Soul, a, a heart cry for us as a church right now, that our soul would be awake, wide awake, to the goodness of God, to who he is, to what he's doing, and that we would be desperately desiring to be near to him. So please stand. Let us sing. Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear praises, he hears faith. There is a sound I love to hear, is the sound. Yeah. 
So good to worship our God. Uh, in our service last week, uh, in our service here on site at church, I, I opened by asking you a question, uh, and it was a question that was quite simply this. Are you sick of restrictions? And it was interesting, the response, because it feels like what is happening on a global scale and definitely local scale is that we're going through these this different group experience of this pandemic moment. And it definitely felt like last week was a tipping point where we went from being you know, like, not happy or content, but okay to go with it, to now being just a bit annoyed and angry. We're seeing riots uh, in Victoria where people have had weeks upon weeks of very harsh, uh, restrictive lockdown measures. And I brought that up, A, just to own that, that this is actually frustrating for us. Um, I know I'm frustrated the way we're having to do things is so different to how we've done it in the past. And some of that's great, and some of that is hard and annoying, but also, we're not going to change honouring the restrictions that are around us because we actually know that that is a way of loving this community. That by you know, meeting either online or on-site and to do that with social distancing uh, is actually really important right now to tell this community that we are a safe place. Because when there's a virus you can't see, um, we can't pretend that you know, none of us don't have it because we're not sure. But there's, there's a moment right now for the church, and, and some people have, have commented that we may have actually missed a moment, that in this pandemic, in this global crisis, that there was an opportunity for the church to, to seek God in a new, fresh way. But quite quickly, the conversation turned, not from what is God doing in this moment, to how do we reopen our buildings? How do we get back to normal? And so that's in part why we're doing this series on preparing for revival, because we don't want to miss this moment. We don't want to be distracted by uh, the things which don't actually call us to God. We want to be wise, definitely, but we actually want to see God in a new, fresh way to hear his voice, to not miss the moment, to not miss what he is saying to us as a church. So last week we opened by saying that to prepare for revival, we need to first of all uh, hear the call to repentance, the call to come back to God, to acknowledge our mistakes, our sins. Uh, Mark Sayers says this, Yet those who have come to the end of themselves, who hunger for God to again move, must first turn their holy discontent upon themselves, not their frustrations at maybe what the church has done wrong or the restrictions in our world, but to turn that holy discontent upon themselves not in self-condemnation, not in self-hatred or insecurity, but rather in a courageous act of imagination. Repentance is turning, and it's an act of courage, of bravery, of saying, I can't carry this anymore, God. Would would I become more like you? Now, we said last week, the heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. Our own heart, its state, how we're going. And so we've we continue with that heart of repentance, of turning from that which is wrong in our hearts, in our lives. We don't project onto others and, and blame them for our own deficiencies, our own, our own gunk, our own junk. But this week we, we carry with repentance, but we also now, we want to hunger for the presence of God. And to be a church who's prepared and preparing for revival means that we center our lives on chasing God of encountering him, of knowing him, but not just knowing him as an abstract thought, like a you know a divine stalker. Oh, I know your birthday, God, you know, 25th of December. Oh, I know a bit about your story. No, no, we actually know him personally, and he knows us. And the invitation throughout the word of God is to actually have the presence of God come into our very being. So would you join me? Let's pray. Our Lord God, as we are preparing for revival, we want to be a church who hears the call to repentance, hears the call to, to hunger for you again, 
to acknowledge what's wrong, but then to move into what is right. Because when you created us, you created us in your image and you said it was good. And while sin may have marred that image, it cannot take away that which was good. So this morning, I pray, Lord, that we would be a church who hungers for your presence, who seeks after you, that would have a, a courageous act of imagination, believing that we can actually walk with you and be known by you. In your name we pray. Amen. There's a a comment or a joke that we often make, and that comment or joke is often made when maybe we're eating something we shouldn't be or when we're lounging around the house when we maybe should be exercising. And it's when we're eating something and we say, oh, my body's a temple. Have you ever heard that phrase? And it's actually a deeply biblical phrase. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, in Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, he says this, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple? And that God's spirit dwells in your midst. Now this is a a phrase that uh, may be known to some of us in the church and even might be out there in, in our world that we are God's temple. But this was a radical claim in Paul's day. Because they had plenty of temples. They had temples where, you know, different images of different gods would stand and they would you know, sacrifice and bow to these, these idols and, and the difference between all these other temples and the temple of, of Yahweh, of God, of Israel, was that all these other temples, the idols, the images were made by humans. They were human conceptions, whereas Yahweh, uh, the God of Israel, is the true God. And what God is wanting to do is to move from having these, these broken temples with, with idols which we don't actually have a sense of the presence of God in. He wants to move even from it the temple of Israel being the place where people go to encounter the presence, to actually everyone's lives being a temple. Every single person recognizing that your very being is is a, a structure, a facility where the presence of God can make its home. J.I. Packer says that it's with this searching, scorching manifestation of God's presence that renewal, revival begins And by its continuance, that renewal is sustained, that the presence of God is both our destination as the people of God, that we are going to a place where he is, but also it's the road, it's it's the air we breathe, that we can actually know God and be known by him and have our lives filled to the brim with him. So the question for us this morning, as we're preparing for revival, is your life filled with God? Is your very being, is your body, is your soul, are you hungry for God this morning? Or you may be snacking on things which aren't actually filling your soul. Are there empty calories? Are there there the the chips and the lollies of, of this world which seem great and taste good, but they're actually filling your deepest core of who you are? In Psalm 1, the writer says these words, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is the law of the Lord. Notice this language. This language isn't stoic or reserved. It's passionate. It's emotional. It's it's embodied. Whose delight is the law of the Lord, who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. There's this beautiful image of of our temples, of our bodies, of our beings, of who we are, And there's systems and structures which Psalm 1 kind of says, don't fall into these systems and structures. Don't walk in step with the wicked. Don't align yourself with those who are wicked. Don't stand in the way of sinners or sit in the company of mockers. Don't to make home with those who mock. But if you want your temple to, to yield life and fullness and hope and strength, 
then planted by streams of water. And, and this image is, is a beautiful image because often trees are dependent on the rain, dependent on the seasons, hoping for the rain. But if you're planted near a stream of water, you are enabled to flourish at all seasons, at all times. That this image is a person who meditates and delights in the law of the Lord, who is a temple where the presence of God is, is like a tree that is continually sustained, who does not wither but prospers, who is vital, who is strong, who shows courage and hope. And so the the really simple question, I know this will be actually quite a quick sermon this week uh, because I think what Barry shared and what we've done up to this point has been so great and I didn't want to get in the way, but really... If we're talking about hungering for the presence of God, let's actually enter into a time where we seek after him, where we sing songs to him, where we pray to him, where we actually, you know, I just get out of the way and we let the uh, the spirit of God minister to us as a church. So we're going to sing in, in moments. And I just, I pray in this moment that as we sing, that this would become a thin place for us, that this would become a home, that God's presence would fill us up as a church that maybe life would transcend and those things which we think are filling us up but are actually empty calories in our soul that would actually have a true hunger for God. Let's pray. Our Lord God, we want to worship you. We want to encounter you. And and God, I can't do that. I can't whip that up, but only you can. And so in this moment, no matter where people are and how they're engaging with this, we pray, Lord that they would encounter you. That you would use these words that we sing to to draw us closer to you and to your presence. In your name we pray. Amen. So lean in. We're going to sing two songs. Let's, Let's seek after God. Let's connect our hearts to him. Let's add faith to faith. Let's stand. Let's sing. Sorrows led my guide by his own betray. The sin of men and wrath of God has been on Jesus' lay. Silent as he stood. Sunset free 
always free and deep Now my debt is paid, it is paid in full By the precious blood that my Jesus spilled
God, we, we, we want to keep on drawing near to you. We want to hunger for you to move. We want to see your glory here in this place. We want this temple to shine bright with your light. We want to see broken lives healed. We want to see hope restored. We want to see you, God. We want to encounter you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. So please join us at 315 Every day, as we pray for more of the Spirit of God, more of his presence, more of him in our life. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Have a great week. Uh, Next week, after our service, we'll be having morning tea. Uh, If you want to come along to that, please make sure you email the booking email address, which is on the screen right now. Have a great week. This is home.